Welcome to the interactive e-learning module on level measurement. Hi, my name is Stephanie, your guide to take you through this module. There is also a menu on the left-hand side of your screen and the control buttons on the bottom of the screen to help you navigate your way. This is part two of our level measurement series. Hopefully, you've just finished part one and are ready to go. But if you somehow missed part one, you might want to go back and do that one now. In part two, we will be giving an overview of the many different technologies Siemens uses to measure level. The variety of technologies is necessary because of the many different application influences. These variables determine the selection of the best level device, including the physical, liquid, solid, or slurry, temperature, pressure or vacuum, chemistry, dielectric constant of the medium, density of the medium, agitation, acoustical or electrical noise, vibration, mechanical shock, tank or bin size and shape. Add to that constraints such as price, accuracy, appearance, response rate, ease of calibration or programming, physical size and mounting of the instrument, monitoring or control of continuous or point levels. Wow! Confused yet? Not to worry. Luckily, Siemens provides a wide range of level measurement technologies because no single technology addresses all of these conditions. So let's dig in. Henry is going to help break them all down for us. Oh, and make sure you pay close attention because I'll be asking you questions later. Hi, I'm Henry, and welcome to Level Applications and Siemens Technology Solutions. Capacitance measures the material covering the probe. So as the material level varies, so does the amount of electrical charge between the measurement probe and the vessel. This technology is used in both continuous and point level devices. Continuous level is based on the change in capacitance. For point level, a switch point is determined based upon the delta of the dielectric constant between two materials. For example, air and liquid, or oil and water. Capacitance works well in applications with narrow entries and with complex vessel shapes. It also works well in aggressive conditions with high temperatures and pressure and harsh chemicals. You can also measure the full capacity of a vessel with the complete length of the probe. In interface applications, the level of the material with the higher dielectric is measured. It's important to remember that capacitance measures the amount of material covering the probe. One of the great things about capacitance products, especially point level, is that they can be tuned to operate in liquids, solids, or slurries. This versatility makes them effective as plant spares because a single product can work in various applications. Capacitance applications need to consider the following. Build up from sticky materials. Wear from aggressive solids. Mechanical damage caused by turbulence. Or that the long, rigid probe may be difficult to transport, to install, or even to maintain. And then there is the dielectric material. Changing the dielectric properties when operating in a non-conductive range of 1.4 to 19 will affect the level reading. Gravimetric level measurement is when the vessel is supported or suspended on load cells which measure the force. It is proportional to the weight applied from the vessel and its content. The density of the material must be known to calculate the level accurately. Gravimetric level measurement is very accurate when the density of the material is stable. But if the density does not remain constant, the level will vary with the weight reading. This reading, however, is not influenced by material type itself, internal conditions, or any tank geometry. It's non-intrusive, and there's no loss of tank capacity. Gravimetric applications must consider the following. Density changes, and readings that can be influenced by external forces, such as material buildup, or vessel connection, or even someone getting onto the vessel for some reason. You should also note that a retrofit installation needs to be carefully considered because the costs are high and the installation may be difficult. Guided wave radar transmits a radar pulse along a probe. The pulse reflects back to the sensor when it reaches the material surface or an interface of two different materials. The time of flight from the transmitted signal to the return signal measures the distance and the level is calculated. Guided wave radar is sometimes referred to as time domain reflectometry, 
or TDR. Guided wave radar is not affected by density, temperature, and dielectric constant. It operates in extreme conditions, measures interface, is very responsive, and overcomes complex tank geometry. Interface measurement is possible between two materials with distinctly different dielectric constants. Guided wave radar applications must consider the following. False level reflections from buildup, wear from aggressive solids, turbulence damaging the mechanical bits, and the long rigid waveguards are difficult to transport, install, and maintain. In long range solids, the tensile forces on the probe also need to be accounted for. Non contacting radar transmits a radar signal to the material surface. The time of flight from the transmit to the return signal measures the distance traveled and then the level is calculated. Non contact radar is almost unaffected by atmospheric conditions like vapor, pressure, temperature, or dust. Key considerations for a radar application include the following. Material dielectric constant determines device model and antenna size. High frequencies and larger antennas offer best results for low dielectrics, such as hydrocarbon. And you should also be aware of tank geometry and obstructions, because radar needs a relatively clear line of sight to the material. In solids, be sure to account for bulk density, along with the dielectric constant, to ensure a good reflection. An aerated, low-density, low-dielectric material may not have enough reflective qualities. Ultrasonic technology measures time of flight from transmission to the received sonic echo. From this, the level is calculated. Ultrasonic technology is the most common non-contacting level technology in use today. The robust, self-cleaning transducers require little maintenance as they withstand vibration and material buildup. With Siemens Ultrasonics, a transducer with a submergence shield will also detect submerged conditions. Ultrasonics requires a medium to carry the sound wave from the transducer to the material. Clear air is ideal, and other homogeneous gases are compatible, although some may not transport the sound wave efficiently. Gases such as carbon dioxide seriously attenuate the sound wave, making a level reading difficult. Vapor and dust can do the same. So check out your application very carefully. Hydrostatic level measurement uses a pressure transmitter to sense increasing or decreasing pressure as the depth of the material changes. It senses the weight of everything above the sensor, also referred to as head pressure. This information is then converted to a level measurement. The type of pressure device to use depends on the physical arrangement of the application. Hydrostatic level measurement is great for complex vessels as the internal shape or contents do not matter. It is also suitable for high temperature and pressure and for adverse conditions such as foam, vapor, and turbulence. And with hydrostatic level, you can fill your vessel to the brim as there is no device inside. But while it does not actually touch the contents, it is still a contacting technology. So check for buildup and chemical compatibility needs to be factored in for diaphragm selection. Also look for density variances that can affect level readings and be aware of the environmental impact of potential leakage. Electromechanical level devices use a change in mechanical activity to detect level. The rotary paddle is rotated by a motor. As the level of the material rises it contacts the paddle and stops the rotation. The motor then activates an electrical switch. Vibratory forks have oscillating tines that vibrate at a resonant frequency. When material contacts the tines, the oscillation change trips the switch. Electromechanical devices work with most dry materials, even those with very low densities. Dielectric constant does not affect their operation, and they are easy to install and commission. But note that they can be sensitive to buildup, so keep that in mind when choosing this technology. Also make sure that they are installed in a location away from adverse material flow, like inflow areas. So as you can see, Siemens has the level technology for your application. But now let's see if you are paying attention and can distinguish between the different technologies. I'll turn you back to Stephanie and she's going to ask you a few questions. Think carefully before answering and if you want to review any of the previous slides, remember you can click on them in the menu on the left. Thanks for listening and good luck! More often than not, 
multiple technologies can work for the same application. So for these next few questions, keep in mind that there may be more than one correct answer. Congratulations! You've just completed part two of our level measurement series. You can also visit our website to learn more about our entire level portfolio at siemens.com forward slash level. You can also download the attached level guide for more information. At Siemens, we have the right technology for the right application. For more e-learning modules like these, please visit siemens.com forward slash pi dash e-learning and click on Interactive Modules. And if any of our e-learning modules pique your curiosity and you would like to learn more, then we invite you to come visit one of our training centers at any of these locations. Our in-depth courses include hands-on training from application specialists. You'll get to play with actual PI instruments and learn about them in more detail. For both introductory and advanced training, go to Siemens.com forward slash PI dash training and register now. Want to learn more? Check out the following Siemens books. Available on Click for Business or through your local Siemens distributor. This e-learning module is not only viewable on your computer, but on your mobile devices too. All major mobile devices are supported, including Apple, Android, Blackberry, and more. BrainShark even offers an app for Apple users and an app for Android users for a more interactive mobile presentation. So get mobile. Level measurement is the most common process measurement in industrial instrumentation. I hope that you enjoyed learning more about all of the level technologies and how to properly apply them. Thanks for watching.